before we begin, let us ask the guidance of the Holy Spirit that our session may be fruitful and meaningful. And so we pray. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Direct, O Lord, we beseech you, all our actions by your holy inspirations, and carry them on by your gracious assistance, that every prayer and work of ours may begin always from you, and by you be happily ended. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Saint Monica, pray for us. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Good morning to everyone. Thank you for being with us once again for our lecture series. We are now on our second day and we are halfway through. This day, we will be listening to two empowered women who are starting to create their own mark in their chosen career fields. This morning, we will be listening to the career story and sharing of medical frontliner, a doctor in training. It is my honor to present to you our lecturer for this morning. She attended her undergraduate studies in the University of Santo Tomas and took Bachelor of Science in Medical Technology from 2013 to 2017. In the same year, she successfully passed the board licensure examination for medical technologists. Soon after, she pursued her postgraduate studies in medicine in the University of Santo Tomas and graduated this year. Apart from the aforementioned educational achievements, our lecturer had attended specialized trainings and seminars in the field of medicine. Some of these include topics on venipuncture, toxicology, patient safety and security, hematology, basic life support, infertility, functional urology, and advanced pelvic surgery, and infection prevention and control. She is currently working on her postgraduate medical internship in East Avenue Medical Center. Our lecturer will share with us her discussion entitled Intro to Med 101. Ladies and gentlemen, let us all listen to Ms. Erica Muriel G. Castillo of CSMA Batch 2013. So, um, good day everyone. I hope to see Erica Muriel Castillo. Isa po akong alumni from um, Coleo de Santa Monica de Angat, Batch 2013. And um, binigyan po ako ng opportunity na mag-share with you guys um, yung um, career journey ko. And here it is, um, Intro to Men 101. So, ito lang yung mga different topics na i-discuss ko. Um, a brief overview lang. So what is medicine really all about? What are the different fields? The steps to becoming a doctor, the medical school journey, just some pictures, um, career considerations as well as realiz realizations. So what is um, medicine course basically all about? So um, it is um, according to Callahan in 1998, uh, medicine encompasses the relief of pain and suffering, the promotion of health and the prevention of disease, and the cure of disease when possible, and the care of those who cannot be cured. So um, just to break down kung anong, um, anong involved when you choose the career of medicine or becoming a doctor. So ito yung mga um, usually na aaralin mo. So pain relief, so aralin mo yung mga different uh, diseases, yung mga di iba't ibang sakit at yung mga iba't ibang mga gamot para mawala yung sakit. Then, uh, health programs or promotion of health. So, matututunan mo rin paano um, mag-conduct ng health program or mag-organize ng health program para sa community mo. Um, usually, ito um, uh, nangyayari sa mga barangay or sa mga program like um, TB dots, okay naman yung pagtanggal ng katarata, as well as um, yung mga medical missions, kung aware kayo sa mga ganon. Ayun. So, next is prevention of disease. So, preventative medicine. 
Um, importante din ito para ma-stop natin yung um, yung start ng disease or pan para hindi magkaroon ng disease in the first place. So, ito yung mga promotion ng um, healthy diet as well as exercise. Matututunan mo rin yung mga different types of exercise as well as um, ano yung mga proper um, nutrition para sa mga iba't ibang types of people. Next is um, cure of disease. So, basically, um, through research um, or clinical trials, matututunan mo kung paano gumawa ng research and also um, uh, paano uh, i-try, i-cure yung disease and ano yung mga ginagawang uh, uh, researches ngayon na para makatulong sa field of medicine in curing diseases um, today. Next is... Um, care of those who cannot be cured. So, ito yung mga terminal ill patients, usually mga matatanda na o kaya naman yung may mga cancer. So, palliative care, bali, bibigyan natin ng um, the best way to care for the patient in the most um, painless way possible para comfortable na lang sila kahit malala na yung sakit nila. So, these are the different specializations of medicine. So, um, pag naging doctor ka na, maraming different fields of medicine na pwede mong pasukan. So, hindi lang siya um, porket doctor ka lang yun na yun. Pwede ka mag-specialize. So, here are the list. So, internal medicine, obstetrics, gynecology, surgery, pediatrics, Neurology, ophthalmology, ENT, anesthesiology, pathology, radiology, and many more. So, um, x-rays for radiology, anesthesiology, yan yung mga nagpapatulog sa mga pasyente bago mag-surgery. Um, ofta, yung tumitingin sa mga mata nyo. Uh, neurology, yung, yung um, in charge sa mga may mga strokes. O kaya naman may mga... Um, um, abnormal movement disorders. Ayun. So, um, i-explain ko lang yung major um, rotations or major fields um, for a brief overview. So, internal medicine treats diseases that affect the different internal organs. So, it can be the lungs, the heart, the kidneys, the stomach, or the liver, you name it. So, um, example is parang kwari, may heart attack. So, um, organ yun sa body natin. So, internal medicine, basically, mga cardiologists, so mga specialists yun ng internal medicine, sila yung bahala sa mga may heart attack. Diabetes or pneumonia, so yung mga endocrinologists, and then pneumonia, yung mga pulmonologists naman. So, <clears throat> sa internal medicine, ano yung mga aralin mo? So, aralin mo yung mga heart tracings or yung ECG, yung mga nakikita sa TV, yung may mga tracing sa ganito. So, ito yung pang-trace nung heart, yung electric, kasi yung heart natin, pag nagbibit yan, nagsasend siya ng um, electrical impulses. So, measure yun through ECG. And, titingnan ko normal yung heart mo. So, x-rays, so, yung mga, matututo ma ka magbasa ng x-ray, kung abnormal ba yung size ng heart, o kaya naman may tubig ba sa baga, yung mga ganun. And then, um, blood pressure. Matututunan mo paano mag-measure ng blood pressure. Next is ub So, um, this specializes in the care of women during pregnancy and childbirth and women's health issues. So, sa ub sila yung mga bahala sa mga mothers na pregnant and sila yung magme-make sure na safe yung pregnancy ng mother until ipanganak yung baby. So, sila yung in charge doon. Surgery, so branch of medicine that is concerned with the treatment of conditions using instruments and operative techniques. So, uh, using, um, sa surgery naman, syempre, um, like, kumari merong na-accidente ka, o kaya man may fracture ka, ganun. So, ang surgery, sila yung bahala mag-opera sa'yo para um, maging okay ulit yung mga broken bones mo or kung may um, internal bleeding ka, may um, pagdudugo sa loob ng katawan mo, sila yung magtatahe or mag-cauterize uh, para maging okay yung bleeding. 
So, include ko na yung picture namin sa East Avenue Medical Center. Um, nag, where in, nag-assist ako in a minor surgery. Next is um, pediatrics. So, this is a branch of medicine that deals with the health and medical care of infants, children, and adolescents from birth up to the age of 18. So, um, siguro um, familiar kayo dito. Siguro meron kayo sarili yung pedia wherein um, sila yung bahala sa pag-manage ng mga patients from um, from birth up to 18 years old. Gaya ng anong sabi ng definition dito. So, kung mara, meron kang um, primary complex or PTB, tuberculosis, okay naman, um, meron kang dengue. So, mga pedia yung bahala sa'yo. Ito yung, in-include ko yung picture ko with my patient sa pedia ward. Um, Pero healthy na siya ngayon, pa-discharge na, pa-uwi na siya ngayon. So, um, just a brief overview of the timeline of how to become a doctor or your journey. So, first, you'll be taking up a pre-medicine course or a pre-med, pre-med course. So, pwede kang kumuha ng kahit anong four-year or five-year undergraduate course. It can be a Bachelor of Science or Bachelor of Arts. Pwede kang kumuha ng music, pwede kang kumuha ng um, engineering or even nursing. So, matapos mo yun, eligible ka na para mag-med. So, in my case, I took up medical technology kasi um, very helpful yung course na yun to um, get a grasp pagpasok na ng medicine. Next is uh, med proper. So, four years ito. And after graduating, you will be considered a doctor of medicine na. So, um, kaka-graduate ko lang noong July um, from UST as, uh, UST as med. Um, next is postgraduate internship. So, this is um, one year of internship at any hospital na accredited under um, DOH. So, mag-intern ka or on the job training wherein you'll be supervised by different um, doctors na mas experience sa'yo and tuturuan ka nila and makakamit ka na ng mga patients and paano matututunan mo paano sila alagaan and pagalingin. So after internship, yun yung kukuha ka ng board exam para meron ka ng uh, license para mag-practice as a general practitioner. So yan yung sabi kong um, be, um, be yung first step na maging doctor. So for specialization, um, this would usually take about three to five years. So this would entail you entering residency as well as fellowship. So um, what's the difference between the two? So for residency, you can, um, yun yung mga pinakita kong cor- uh, fields kanina, different fields of medicine. Kware, um, residency is yung kukunin yung internal medicine. And then after a few years, mag exam ka. And then kung gusto mo mag-fellowship or interested ka mag-specialize further, so kukunin mo cardiology or pulmonology o okay, kaya naman um, other mas specialized na fields. So ito are just some pictures of my med journey if you're interested to be to what it looks like as a um, med student. So... Um, here, dito kami sa lab sa, for anatomy wherein aaralin mo yung different parts ng body natin. So, nasa lab kami na to, naka um, face mask, um, hair cap, as well as lab gown para less contamination. And then, um, ito, usually ito yung mga set of um, classmates ko, pero marami kami, di lang kami at mga ito. So, um, sila yung usually kung kasama mag-aral or um, kasama gumawa ng case and mag-aral ng case. So, um, in regards to um, presenting a case, um, usually ganito yung setting sa classroom. So, um, sa isang conference room or malaking room, mayroong mga doctors na uh, magtatanong sa'yo as well as uh, magkikinig sa report mo as well as your classmates, as you report a certain um, disease and how to treat it, how, ano yung magagandang medications para 
ma-treat yun and um, ano yung um, symptoms nung sakit na yun. So, um, i-expose din kayo sa surgery. So, um, pwede ka rin magsamali sa medical, medical missions, sa mga um, tuli um, surgeries sa uh, Um, so that is available to general public. So matututunan mo mag um, mag opera sa small 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 scale of operations. And then, ato naman uh, is just the um, my internship right now. Nasa pedia ward ako ngayon. So ato yung mga kasama ko mga taga USD din. So um. Um, let's just dive into what's important for the career orientation week. So what led me to my current career? So here are some questions that I considered were um, important um, when choosing a career. Kasi um, di ako nag-diretso uh, agad sa pagpili ng medical technology or sa doctor in or doctor of medicine in general. Marami din kinonsider na iba't ibang Um, courses para for my future. So, what kind of lifestyle do I want? So, um, sa tanong na to, ano yung gusto kong ma-achieve na lifestyle? Gusto ko ba yung uh, lagi akong busy? Gusto ko ba yung um, mayroon akong mas maraming off days? Gusto ko ba yung mas nakakagala ako? So, consider mo yun. Kung gusto mo ng regular job na 8 to 5, or gusto mo yung may parang duty sa hospital na pwedeng night duty, pwedeng may um, long long shifts, mga ganun. So, what are my, next question is, what are my priorities in life? So, basically, um, kailangan may consider kung kaya mo i-balance yung career mo as well as yung other aspects of your life, like um, spending time with your family and friends, being able to have time for yourself, and also to... Um, to man to have hobbies yung mga ganun. so kailangan mo isipin kung kaya mo ba i-balance ito kung i-choose mo yung career path nito and then for me this is my personal question how can i improve people's lives while staying happy with my own life so um, when choosing a career um uh, you need to consider kung um how how you can contribute to the community with your career so for example um if teacher ka nakakatulong ka sa mga students and nag-enjoy ka sa um pagturo sa mga estudyante so yun yung to choose mong career whereas for um for medicine so gusto kong makatulong na gumaling yung mga tao and doon ako feel ko masaya ako so yun yung to choose kong career So um so CSME or our high school for me personally nakatulong siya sa pagdiscover ng aking career ko ano talagang gusto ko kasi um sa Santa Monica na po-promote yung pagdadasal lagi. So as you, uh, as you can remember pre-pandemic parang laging may Eucharistic celebrations, 'di ba? And lagi ding may Um, rosaries during rosary prayers during lunchtime pag month of October. So, para sa akin, um, mara, malaking tulong yun. As well as yung mga recollections, yung mga retreats. And then, for me, nag-develop din sa akin yung good study habits kasi um, maraming subjects, di ba, sa high school or sa LM. And then, um, natututunan mo ko ano yung magandang study habit for you kung gusto mo ba magpahinga mo na pag-uwi or gusto mo diretso aral agad para makatulog ka maaga, yung mga ganun. And it also for me, um, Santa Monica provided a great environment for learning and fun activities. So, um, pre-pandemic kasi parang uh, maraming activities sa Santa Monica. As you can remember, may Nutrition Week, mayroong Filipino may uh, buwan ng wika, mga program na for me, masaya yon Tapos, as well as yung mga intrams. And then, marami ding, um activities for learning sa um, sa lab, meron din sa AVR room, if naalala nyo yung mga yun. And for me, parang um, 
na nakasa yung aking um, um, experience as a Santa Monica and as a, and as a student. And lagi, lagi kong pinabalikan yung mga memories ko with my high school friends kasi um, super saya sa Santa Monica. Um, some realizations, some takeaways for me um, um, that you need to consider when you want to choose a career. So you need to consider um, passion on what, um, by passion, I mean, ano yung gusto mo talagang kunin na course and kung magugustuhan mo ba to in the long run and um, syempre, um, would it make you happy? Um, so, Ayun. So, time management next is kaya mo ba i-manage yung time mo sa pag-aaral and also sa pag-fulfill ng mga hobbies na gusto mo and ano ba talaga yung uh, uh, priorities in your life as I said earlier. As well as um, important to yung talents and strengths. So, I believe na you need to consider and think kung ano yung mga talents mo and yung mga subjects na nag excel ka talaga. So, for example, kung um, very um, interested ka sa physics as well as sa math, pwede may consider engineering or kung mas um, uh, developed ka sa music and sa arts, pwede ka mag-pursue ng music course or ng arts course as well. And then, yung strengths mo, kung magaling ka sa science, then you could consider taking up Um, biology or taking up um, uh, microbiology or even medicine. So the best career choice is one that makes you feel fulfilled and pleased because it defines one's identity and gives meaning to your life. So um, a career, as as uh, as you can um, see, is um, it defines who you are. And every day, mo kasi tungo gawin na job. So kailangan Um, kailangan pag-isipan mo ito mabuti and gagawin mo ito for a long time. And lastly, never forget to ask God for guidance and wisdom in important decisions. So, um, when choosing a career, um, it is a very um, big step. And uh, honestly, um, siguro nakakatakot sa una. And uh, an advice ko lang is um, you can look towards God towards God um, for guidance and wisdom kung anong gusto mong um, course na kunin. And siguro mas applicable ito sa mga uh, senior high school students kasi malapit na sila pumasok sa college. Pero sa mga younger high school students or grades, um, pwede mo rin isipin na yung lecture na to is parang pang expose sa'yo. Tapos pwede ka na rin mag-isip kung anong sa tingin mo magandang job or what you want to be when you grow up. So, ayun. So, uh, now I will be proceeding to my next topic, which is COVID. So, um, magbibigay lang ako ng mga konting um, information about COVID since um, this is very um, important, um, especially since nasa pandemic tayo ngayon. Ayun. So, um, what is COVID-19? So, isa tong um, disease or sakit na caused by coronavirus called SARS-CoV-2. And una itong na-detect sa Wuhan, China by the World Health Organization on 31st December 2019. And kumalat na siya sa iba't ibang parts ng mundo. So, um, paano ito nahahaw? Paano ito nag-transmit or nahahawa ang mga tao? So, it can be through the form of droplets, contact, or fomites. So, pag sabing droplets, yun yung mga, kuwari, nabahing ka or naubo ka, merong mga droplets yan for sure ng mga laway mo or sipon mo. So, kung positive ka for COVID, mahahawa yung mga kasama mo through that. Kung di mo cover yung bibig mo or yung ilong mo pag nagsisneeze or cough ka, contact. Kung nahawakan nahawakan ka or nagipaghug ka or um uh, nagsay hi ka or any any form of contact with a covid positive person yun yung isang transmission next is fomites or 
sa surfaces ng mga tables, war sa mall, tapos nahawakan mo yung table ko saan doon kumain yung COVID positive. So, isang form of transmission na rin yun. Ito yung mga iba't ibang uh, transmission. Pwede sa elevator, sa laptop, sa ballpen, sa tissue, or sa doorknob. Kaya mas okay talaga na maghugas ka palagi ng kamay and mag-alcohol din. So, um, pag sinabing close contact, ano ba ibig sabihin ng close contact? So, pag may nakasalamuha ka na tao na may COVID-19 within one meter for more than 15 minutes, considered close contact ka na. Or may direct physical interaction. Kwari, dinalaw ka ng friend mo or ng relative mo na may COVID, direct physical interaction, na ipagbeso ka or hug mo, hinag mo yung relative mo, pwede kang close contact. Had direct interaction with a person with COVID-19 without wearing protective equipment. So, um, uh, if nag- kumain kayo sa labas, tapos um, for a while, for a short while, tinanggal nyo yung mask nyo, tapos uh, yung pala, yung isa sa mga kasama nyo, COVID positive. So, considered close contact ka na. So, doon, magkailangan mo na mag um, quarantine. So, ano yung mga iba't ibang symptoms? So, um, ito yung mga common na mararanasan mong symptoms. Um, siguro alam nyo na yung mga ito, malay or um, paghihina ng katawan, fatigue or parang napapagod ka madalas or mas, ma- mas madali ka ng mapagod, sakit ng ulo, ubo, uh, lagnat, um, masakit yung lalamunan. So, ito yung mga common symptoms. Parang ano lang talaga, parang flu. Pero kala at this time of pandemic, you need to consider kung, especially kung lumalabas ka, kung possible symptoms na to ng COVID. So, ano pinakaiba ng quarantine and isolation? For quarantine, ito yung mga at you, you go for quarantine pag na-expose ka sa COVID-19 positive patient. Whereas for isolation, confirm COVID-19 positive ka. So, kailangan mo mag-isolate and then Um, um, mag, uh, i-observe mo yung sarili mo kung mag, uh, gagaling ka. So, usually kasi um, for isolation, pwede ka sa bahay lang or pwede sa facility or pwede sa hospital. Usually kasi ang mga cases ng COVID is usually mild. Nasa 80% ng cases is usually mild. And the rest of the 20% usually nasa hospital kasi moderate or severe case na So usually um what you can do is um contact your local government unit inform mo sila na covid positive ka after an RT-PCR test and sila yung magbahala na magdala sa iyo sa isolation facility So um just to inform you at the total number of cases as of November 9, 2021 Meron, sa worldwide, meron tayong 249 million cases. And for the Philippines, meron tayo 2.8 million cases. So, uh, marami pa rin yan considering na two years, almost um, two years pa lang ng COVID. So, um, for the cases of um, in the Philippines, the trend of cases in the Philippines, as you can see, um, uh, There are 2.8 million confirmed cases and 44,000 deaths. So, makikita mo yung spike talaga. Um, na, as you can remember, no March at no August, merong surge ng cases, di ba? Pero ngayon, we're down to almost um, averaging of 2,000 cases per day. So, consider- considerately super mababa na siya compared no earlier parts of the year. Kaya siguro nagbaba ng alert level ang government. Pero that doesn't mean na hindi ka magiging careful pa rin pag lumalabas ka. Kailangan mo pa rin mag-mask. So, um, as of November 9, mayroong 2,605 positive cases in the last 24 hours and 191 deaths. So, um, just um, these numbers are just to remind you na mayroong pa rin COVID. So, 
Baka pa rin lumabas na as you please as, um, if I were to advise you. And always sanitize your hands, syempre. And uh, COVID is real. So prevention. So um, first off, we have vaccines. So ito yung mga available na vaccines right now sa Philippines. And then ito yung efficacy rate. Pag sinabing efficacy rate, ito yung percentage na uh, safe ka sa COVID pag kinuha mo yung vaccine na ito. So, um, uh, just to see na, to show you na mara, matataas yung percentages ng um, uh, uh, percentage ng efficacy rate ng vaccine sa iyo. As you can see, uh, kahit hindi uh, lahat 100%, nagpo-provide pa rin ito ng protection against COVID-19. So, as much as possible, if may, I would I would suggest na if as long as merong um, available vaccines sa area nyo, it is much better to get it. Kesa na wala kang protection, wala kang um, security or immunity against the COVID-19 infection. And uh, sa ngayon, di ba, uh, yung mga bata pwede nang kumuha. 12 to 17 years old. Inannounce ito noong November 3. So, um, ang, so far as uh, as far as I know, um, uh, Pfizer and Moderna yung ina-offer na uh, vaccines para sa children. And so far, considered safe naman. And kahit sa hospital namin sa East of, merong um, vaccination drive for kids. So, in, if interested kayo, pwede nyo ako i-contact Pwede kayo mag-register for that. So, um, isa sa mga usual na tanong, bakit merong breakthrough, bakit merong nagpa-positive pa rin sa COVID um, kahit vaccinated na? So, ayun uh, ang tinatawag nating breakthrough infection wherein nagkakaroon ka ng COVID more than two weeks after ng vaccination mo or fully vaccinated ka. So, ang uh, nangyayari kasi ito, um, it is expected and usually kasi um, kahit magpa-vaccine ka, uh, meron pa rin small percentage or risk na mahawa ka. So, kailangan mo pa rin, um, i- kailangan mo pa rin mag-iingat. So, kailangan mo pa rin um, try not to go outdoors a lot and always um, sanitize. And if uh, kahit sa Facebook, if you were to see na um, ang taas doc ng mga ano, dami pa rin nagkaka-COVID kahit magpabakuna. Sa tingin nyo ba okay pa rin mag-vaccine? I would say yes kasi mabag, um, the number of breakthrough infections is still low and super rare na magkaroon na um, ng break, breakthrough infection or ng, mag, magkakaroon ng COVID after magpabakuna kahit sa social networking sites or sa social media, parang marami pa rin. So, alert levels. So, um, as we all know, uh, from alert level 4, naging recently naging alert level 2, wherein um, uh, pwede nang pumunta sa mall ang mga bata and pwede n- as long as naka-wear ng mask. So, ang advice ko sa mga kabataan na gusto lumabas, Alam ko super sabik na kayo no bas pero uh, I would recommend na magpa-vaccine kayo and if ayun yung magpa-vaccine um lagi kayong mag-ingat and double ingat pag lumabas pa rin. So that concludes my um, presentation. Thank you so much. Um, if meron kayong mga katanungan, pwede niyo ako um i-contact sa Facebook and sa email. Um, if you have any other questions about the medicine course or COVID in general. Thank you so much and God bless and good luck sa pag-choose ng career. Thank you.